Marco once again here on an early morning uh, to you know my RSP, uh, my retentional sustainment program. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, you know I woke up, got ready. Um, I've had a little bit of my breakfast. Uh, I brought it with me, of course, from my house. Uh, luckily, you know there's not much traffic, so I'm happy with that. Um, and like I mentioned, it's only about 20 minutes away from my house. So I'm excited, uh, you know, I already got all my stuff with me. I got my bag with my sleeping bag. Uh, so we will see what happens when I get there. And like I said, I'll keep you guys posted if I'm able to kind of record inside. If not, then obviously I just have to wait till tomorrow and give you guys more updates on, you know, what the weekend was like. But as of right now, it's Saturday morning and it is currently 6.40 in the morning. Um, I just have to be there in the morning, uh, no later than 7.30 in the morning. But like I said, I'll keep you guys updated. Um, but other than that, I'll catch you guys uh, next time. What's going on, everyone? I just finished my first weekend at RSP, um, also known as uh, Recruit Sustainment Program for the California Army National Guard. Uh, so, yeah, I was able to, you know, be there for Saturday, all day Saturday, stayed there Saturday night, um, was there Sunday, all the way till Sunday afternoon as I just got released. Um, as I mentioned, you know, I did, uh, you know, I did get my phone taken away. Everyone did. Uh, we weren't allowed to have our phones or any type of uh, car keys uh, during that time. Um, as you can see, I, you know, I just, we just got done. This was the shirt that they gave us uh, yesterday on Saturday evening. And they told us this was going to be the shirt that we would be wearing for today, for Sunday. So yeah, it was a great, you know, great weekend. So it started off Saturday morning and and uh, I was able to eat my breakfast. Um, and good thing I did because they do not give you breakfast when you get there. Um, but you know, yeah, well, when I got there, I was able to be let in into the parking lot. I was able to park and then we formed up outside and waited in a single file line. And uh, we were then let in um, a little bit afterwards. And then when we got let in, that's when we got, once again, we got our, our weight and height. And uh, from my last physical, obviously, I probably only lost like a couple pounds. So I once again had to get taped. Um, but once I got taped, they said that I'm around 19 pounds of 19% uh, body fat. So it's like I lost about at least a pound of body fat from my full physical. So that's a good thing. And uh, after that got completed, I, you know, signed in. Uh, then I was led into the workout room where we then formed up once everyone was there. And when we were there, uh, we were able to form up into groups and or mainly like a platoon which at that time we were three different groups we had a red phase where I was at uh, there was a blue phase where where those are the ones that have been to RSP more than once already and then there was a gold phase and the gold phase are the ones that had just completed boot camp about at least a month to two months ago so those were the three phases that were there. Uh, they said that they do have a green phase, um, but they weren't. They were not there with us, um, and I'm not sure what a green phase entails. Uh, but yeah, when I got there, obviously I was in red phase because that was my first time, and uh, I also since I, that's only going to be my one and only time before I get sent off to boot camp. I was also part of the blue phase while I was doing my some of my paperwork. And I'll get into that uh, later on. So, but, but throughout the weekend, I pretty much remained with the red phase. So, when we got there, I, I remained with red phase. It was a total of seven of us. I uh, ended up being the, the guide on for the red phase, which was, you know, for me, it was okay. You know, I was a class guide on for my police academy, which was... Uh, Fantastic being able to carry the uh, guide on once again. Um, so it was great. Uh, we went outside and uh, we then did the uh, physical test. It wasn't the ACFT. 
the was, what they call the OPAT test. And this is kind of like another physical test where it, I don't know what it's used for because um, they didn't tell us um, why. But they just said it was three of us that had to take it. And I believe it had to deal with uh, our shipping date because two, uh, two of us were shipping in October. And and this is where I got confused because the third one was not shipping until December or January. So he was uncertain so that's where it was kind of confusing, but you know. Uh, um, anyways, we we took our uh, OPAT test, and the OPAT test consists of uh, a standing long jump where you just you just stand straight up, um, and then you have to jump a certain distance uh, as long distance, um, and then afterwards we did uh, uh, a seated throw. Uh, with a medicine ball of, I believe it was five or ten pounds. I forgot. I believe it was five pounds, though. Um, so you just sit down on the ground. Uh, your back is up against the wall, and you're just like arching and throwing the ball, the medicine ball, with two hands, and you're pushing the ball as far as you can. So that's a uh, that was the second one. The third one was a deadlift, and it wasn't to like maximize your deadlifts because. Uh, that I was aware of, I think the max deadlifts that we that they gave us and we did was 120 pounds. So it wasn't nothing challenging on on those. Uh, the next one was a little more challenging because they actually have more endurance in a sense, and that was a a running. Uh, you had to do 20 meter runs uh, there and back. Um, but the way this one works is, you start off on one one side and you run 20 meters. And, oh, excuse me. So you start on one side, you hear a beep. And once you hear the beep, you run 20 meters. And then, as, you know, it depends on how fast you get there. You, you're there for a couple seconds. And then once you hear the beep, you have to run back. And then once you hear the beep again, you're going back and forth, back and forth, and so on. However, as, you know, the time progresses and the more uh, times you're you're doing it back and forth, you're leveling up because I believe you're doing a total of 10 reps per level. And I believe there's a total of 17 levels. And they said it takes approximately almost 25 minutes to complete. Um, so, yeah, once we once we got to about uh, level, I want to say six or seven, it literally felt like I was just jogging there and jogging straight back because by the time I got there, uh, I heard the beep and I had to run right back. So that that had some endurance. Uh, you start off really slow and, and you know really slow, um, but then you know it does progress and it gets uh, a lot more challenging as it, it progresses in your levels. And that was pretty much it for that. So after that, once you complete it, um, you know they they have their scoring system, um, and they said that. Uh, the scoring system is based off of your MOS or your job, and that's what they're going to take uh, into consideration. I'm not sure how that that really works, but uh, you know, uh, they gave it to the three of us, and they said uh, the three of us passed. So that was a good thing. Um, after that, uh, we did a little bit of you know um, training where we did commands such as you know right phase left phase um so a little bit of marching it was unfortunate like for me uh because uh i was for me i was pretty busy especially with uh paperwork so i was bouncing back and forth from like uh doing processing um and going back to my phase with my my platoon and you know doing what uh, catching up what they were studying on um, so I did a little bit of the, the face, uh, the commands and everything, but then I got called to go back and, uh, do my processing, which is my in processing. And then since I'm leaving in 30 days or less than 30 days, I had to do my out processing as well. So I had to do all these paperwork, um, complete that. And then I did my out, uh, out, pa uh, out processing paperwork as well, completed all that. Um, the RSP uh, staff sergeant there and one of the civilian positions, they were there to help us. Um, and I believe we were 
four in total, including myself, uh, that we're processing out for, you know, getting ready to ship out within less than 30 days. So they were there to help us. We had to sign paperwork initial. Um, so look over everything, make sure everything was correct. Uh, I also had to make sure that my forms were correct with uh, my BA, uh, BAH, such as my housing allowance, because I am le leaving uh, with my uh, without, you know, I do have dependents, so I'm leaving a boot camp. Um, so I got to make sure that um, my housing allowance is being taken care of uh, on top of my regular paycheck, um, as well as, uh, you know, my mortgage. It has to be with my utilities. It all has to be in my package. And, uh, after that was completed, uh, I, you know, went back and, uh, finished some of my, uh, training with my, my platoon and, uh, you know, it was mainly classroom work from then. Um, they were teaching us, you know, the sexual harassment stuff, uh, bullying, um, you know, and, and all that stuff that, uh, you know, very important that could, you know, uh, get you in trouble real quick. And uh, from then on, we had our lunch, and our lunch was in uh, uh, the MRE, which is uh, what they call the meal re uh, meal ready uh, thing. Where you, uh, I'll put like a picture of what mine was. Mine was uh, some shredded uh, beef uh, with barbecue sauce. I'll try to put a picture somewhere around here. If not, I'll put the link down below. And uh, it was pretty good. I, uh, I'm not gonna lie. It was. I, I was. I was actually surprised how filling it was as well. Um, and that was my first time I ever had an MRE. Uh, so I couldn't complain. I had no complaints whatsoever. And uh, you know, I got to enjoy my you know MRE uh, outside with you know everyone else. Um, we all got our uh, a different type of MRE, of course. And uh, after we got done eating, um, we did a little bit of. Um, a little bit more of the paperwork uh, so that way you know everything was still finalized um, from then on we did more classroom work and uh, we did a workout uh, the workout was very minor um, it was more like a intervolt uh, rotation what they try to do with the kind of like cardio um, it was at first it started with two minutes but apparently after the first uh, session uh, some people were getting tired, so they reduced it down to a minute um, with like a 30 second break in between. So they had, I believe, I believe it was six or eight uh, sections and you just going around. And uh, I believe we were a total of like 16 to 20 people counting, you know, red, uh, blue and gold phase. So they all did it with us. And uh, so we just went around. And, you know, there was like two or three people in each section. One was like push-ups, sit-ups, uh, jumping jacks, and so on. And uh, so, yeah, we went around and that was pretty much it. Um, we did a little bit of stretching afterwards and then a little bit more of classroom work. And like I said, when it comes to the classroom work, it was mainly, you know, the EEO complaints. Uh, so like your equal opportunity, equal employment opportunity. Uh, more sexual harassment, making sure, you know, you're aware of the differences and how the military has a zero tolerance on it. Um, so be mindful about all these things because uh, they can get you in trouble, even if you're not uh, the person uh, doing it. If you're involved in any way, you're you're held, uh, you know, you know, responsible for it as well, because uh, you're not doing your, your job in, uh, in stopping it in a sense. So make sure if you're seeing that or you're hearing it or anything like that, you're reporting it like you're supposed to because um, that can, you know, get you in trouble in a huge way. Um, and then after that, uh, we had dinner and uh, dinner was held around 1700 hours. Uh, I believe it was almost 1730. So that's about 530 p.m. So 530 at night and uh, couldn't complain once again. Uh, you know, we ended up having uh Small tortas, uh, not you know, not my traditional tortas, but I wasn't gonna complain. It was a very good uh, torta or sandwich or whatever you like to call it. It was really good, and we got it with the uh, chips, uh, the tortilla chips. So those were really good. I'm not sure if every RSP does that. If they, if you guys get something different, 
Um, and you guys are at a different one. Like I said, I'm at RSP in Riverside. And if you guys are at a different RSP, you know, feel free to drop down and see what, uh, what you guys eat. So, uh, that way other people know. Um, but yeah. And then after that, uh, we were just pretty much, uh, we did after dinner, we had a little workout. It wasn't a full workout. It was mainly stretching, um, for the most part, um, I guess just to relieve all the, the the soreness in a sense i'm not sure um because it wasn't a full workout because i'm pretty sure a lot of uh, people would have been puking uh for sure um because the the food was pretty filling and for me it's uh that was a pretty quick uh between lunch and dinner uh uh meals um i'm used to eating between 12 and 1 and then after that i'll eat like around the earliest maybe seven o'clock at night so uh, that was pretty, uh, you know, back-to-back foods for me. So good thing we didn't do like a full-on workout because I might have been the one puking. Um, but yeah, then after the stretching, uh, we were able to, uh, you know, get ourselves cleaned. Oh, uh, before we got cleaned up, we were able to get uh, our cots. Um, and our cots were outside uh, in the storage. We just grabbed them one by one. And it's uh, like a twin-size cot. You're able to pretty much something that you would take to camp. Or something that you will see any type of military, just like a foot, uh, a foot off the ground. Um, so you're able to build it, and it just, you know, you're able to put your blanket or your sleeping bag or whatever you want to do there. Once that was done, uh, we had to do a little bit of cleaning in the bathrooms, um, and that was pretty much it. And after that, we were able to finally get our hygiene uh, done, which we were able to take our shower. Um, change out of our our workout clothes that we had all day and brush our teeth and then pretty much uh, get ready for uh, for bed Um, for us we also did uh, what they call fire watch is where uh, we started at about I believe 8 p.m. was the first uh, the first one and this is what they prepare you for with our uh, with the fire watch because you will be doing it in uh, basic boot camp what they have said and in basic boot camp, they said that every every night, you know, one person is up for like about an hour, and then you know they're they're the ones staying awake. They're the ones making sure that you know all your your buddies are being safe uh, while they're sleeping, making sure that you know you're not getting that special attack or surprise attack in a sense. Uh, there's no fire going on, so that way you can wake everyone up and have them leave, or you know any type of ambush in a sense. Uh, but we had the same thing. Uh, ours were uh, an hour and a half because we weren't that many so we try to break it up for you know evenly all the way across Um, so it wasn't it wasn't bad Uh, you know I gotta stay up with someone it was two of us uh, per per shift if you want to call it and you know when I did mine mine was from three three in the morning to 4 30 in the morning so then I just went back to bed for about 30 minutes to an hour and then woke up and uh got ready so then got ready for that same for the next day or sunday and uh when we woke up we did our um we did a little bit of stretching um or first we put our cots let's go back a little bit we put our cots back uh back the way they were and we put them away um we changed we did our hygiene brush our teeth and everything got changed and we did a little bit of stretching because after the stretching, we started the a- ACFT, the new uh, ACFT, the Army Combat Fitness Test. And uh, for the most part, certain things they didn't want us to max out because of uh, safety issues or safety reasons. Because, uh, of course, right now, uh, like for me, I'm about to be shipping off in less than 30 days. So they don't want to take that uh, chance of you getting injured. So when they do it, you know, they do push you on certain things to, you know, uh, push yourself, but they will not expect you to go all out because they do not want to risk you getting injured, such as the deadlift is one of them. And all they allowed us to do, or for me, at least, they only allowed me to max out at 165. And uh, I believe that's in the like 70, 70%, uh, 70% uh, score for me. Um, but yeah, that was, that was really simple for me. Um, after that we did, uh, the ball throw. So, um, that one, they kind of do expect you to kind of go all out cause it's just, you're throwing the ball. They're trying to teach you the technique 
and make sure you, that you're getting it right because you don't have to be the biggest dude. You don't have to be the strongest person, but it is all technique so that we could throw it far. I believe my furthest one, uh, I threw it eight meters. So I'm still practicing on it. I'm, I was still short about uh, three meters or so uh, for the full 100 point. Uh, my biggest fear is because we were uh, inside and uh, on my practice throw, when I threw it, I threw it kind of high and it did hit the roof. Um, so I didn't want to chance anything on that, on any type of throw. So I think that's, that was uh, a big issue for me. Um, and then after that, we did the sprint drag carry. And that was pretty fun. Um, so I did push myself on that. Uh, you know, so I, I was pretty satisfied with it. I, I ended up doing mine in a minute and 31 seconds. So I did uh, do the full 100 points on it. Uh, after that, uh, we did our planks. And uh, for me, I was satisfied with the planks as well. Uh, I did mine at 3 minutes. or I stopped at 3 minutes and uh, 45 seconds. So I was happy with that. Uh, that was also another 100 points. Uh, then after that, we did our push-ups. And if you're not aware, it's not a regular push-up. These push-ups are you go do a push up all the way down chest is on the ground and then you extend your arms all the way out so it looks like you know you're pretty much your arms are all the way out bring it back in and then you do a full push up that's one you will have somebody there counting um so i was kind of happy on mine um you know i still wanted to do a lot better but i did get 55 push ups in there so i was happy about it um after the push ups um uh, what else? Uh, we ended up going outside for our two mile run. Uh, so yeah, we did the two mile run, and uh, I was satisfied with that as well. So I was happy. I ended up doing that in twelve minutes and twenty seconds. So that was a, a good one. I still want to make sure that I improve, and I still, you know, make sure that my two a days are still paying off for sure. And I want to make sure that you know I still got a, like about two to three more weeks left before I go to boot camp. So I want to make sure that I am uh, in tip-top shape, of course. And uh, after we got done with the ACFT, uh, we did a little bit of stretching outside. And uh, we went back inside the classroom after we were done stretching, and we were able to eat breakfast. And uh, once again, the breakfast was pretty good. We had, like, you know, what you would call a breakfast burrito. Mine was a ba with uh, bacon. Um, they had bacon, sausage, uh and uh, a vegetarian one, and then it was also with uh, the tortilla chips. So that was also filling, um, but for me, it's really hard to eat. Uh, personally, for me, it's hard to eat after working out. I know a lot of people, uh, like a lot of my family and friends, they, they, they are very hungry after working out. That's one of the hardest things for me. Uh, I don't, don't get, I don't like eating after working out. It really fills me up real quick because um, I'm not hungry at all. Um, it takes me a couple hours after working out to actually, you know, be hungry and actually eat an actual meal. So that that's the only hard part for me. But it was filling for me, of course, because like I said, I'm not used to or my body's not accustomed to eating literally right after working out. Uh, and then after working out, we did more classroom work. Um from, you know, testing or not testing, but more like practice tests for, you know, uh, getting ready for boot camp, such as learning the, you know, the rankings, uh, learning, um, you know, from, you know, from the ranks from the bottom to, you know, top in an enlistment, same thing with the officers all the way to your top general. Um, we also learned our phonetics, uh, like I told <laughs> Uh, one of my uh, sergeants asked me, you know, if I knew him. And, uh, of course, I, I know my law enforcement one by heart, which is different, uh, which is Adam Boyd Charles David. Uh, military obviously uses a uh, different uh, phonetic, which is Alpha Bravo Charlie Delta. And I know both of them. However, you know, I've used law enforcement a lot longer and I use them at work, uh, you know, at, you know, on a daily basis. So I could do those, you know, mentally real quick by just looking at a at a word. Um, so when it comes to it, I do sometimes get them confused because, you know, uh, I try to remember that I'm not doing the law enforcement. I'm trying to do the military. 
And then sometimes, you know, one will bounce off the other. And, uh, you know, like uh, you got Mary and Mike. So Mary's on law enforcement side and then Mike is on uh, military side. Um, so sometimes I'll even get them confused. Even in law enforcement, I'll be like Mike and it's not Mike, it's Mary. So it's just things like that. So I, you know, I try to slow down on it. Um, so, uh, you know, I try to be proficient in it and get, you know, as, you know, squared away as I can on it, but I know I will have some difficulties on it, but you know, that's where you have to know where your, your weaknesses are and your strengths are. Cause it's a lot, it's going to be a lot better to work on your weaknesses now before boot camp, then work on your strengths now, and then work on your weaknesses there. Cause, uh, if you could work on your weaknesses before boot camp. You know, you could, you know, you'll have uh, a better, uh, in a sense, advantage. That way, you know, it's up to par at least. And then obviously your strength, you know, I'm not saying ignore it, but, you know, you don't have to put more effort into it than, you know, your your weaknesses. Um, unless you want to continue getting yelled at by a drill sergeant in boot camp and doing a lot of push-ups and running, then uh, go at it, you know. Um, that's what That's what learning is all about. Um, but yeah, and then after that, you know, we did a little bit of a game uh, to, you know, learn the rankings and phonetics, um, learn military time. Uh, so yeah, and then by that time, it was almost 12 o'clock and uh, we went outside, we formed up once again. And once we formed up, we were just released and uh, my sergeant for my for my platoon just made sure that everyone from our phase texted him to make sure that we got home safely because uh, obviously it is accountability they want to make sure that you know you're getting home safely and that way they can pass it on to their chain of command and their supervisors will obviously know about it so that way everyone knows that you know you got home safely and that was pretty much it that was uh, my first weekend at, at you know drill or RSP what they call it and it was uh, it was fun I enjoyed it and of course you know like I said in the next three weeks, I'm going to be getting ready to ship off. Uh, I'll make another video to show you guys what I'm taking for that. Because I know I did bring a sleeping bag and all that other stuff for the RSP. I'm not taking all that stuff. I'm probably taking only my hygiene stuff and a pair of clothes. And that's it. Um, but stay tuned on that. And then uh, that, have a nice day.